Hey, my name is Bhavani Kola. Welcome back to another session of Face to Face to Online Transition. In today's session, we will be looking at the most requested how to create interactive digital notebooks. Thank you so much for all your requests. As I had so many of you requesting me to create tutorials for different interactive PowerPoint activities, I will be breaking them down into multiple sessions. So please make sure you are subscribed and do not miss any of them. In today's session, you will learn to create and customize various versions of interactive notebooks where educators can use them throughout various disciplines. So without a further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So I have created a couple of variations and styles for your journal and composition notebooks. And all these files are editable. You can customize them and edit them as per your needs and requirements. What I will do is I will leave the download link in the description box below just in case you want to download them and you don't have time to create one for yourself. And in this video, I will show you how to create and customize and also edit any of these slides. So let's go ahead and create one first. I'm going to insert a blank slide. And the first thing you're going to do is create the background. It's always good practice to have your guide so you can see where your slides are and if you're symmetric or no. So first step is to insert, insert a rectangle. Make sure you have enough space on all the sides. There you go, that's my rectangle. Once your rectangle is done, right click, format shape, no line, and this is where you can customize your background. You want a leather feel, you want a solid, you want a gradient, you want picture fill, you want a pattern fill, it's totally up to you. I'm going to click on solid and I'm going to pick this color. And once this is done, click on your shadow options, click on your presets and give it a depth. I like this and if you want to make it 3D, click on your 3D format, click on the top bevel and pick what you like. I think I like this one, I'm going to leave it to this and I'm going to close the format shape. Now, once that's done, let's go ahead and insert some pages. Insert, shape, you will click on top corners rounded. Once you do that, you will click on rotate and rotate left 90 degrees. This is not how I want it, so let's drag it. Make sure it's centered. And these are too rounded for me, so click on the yellow button and drag them and make sure it is where you want it to be. Sometimes you will not be able to move this to the place you want, so simply click on Alt, press and hold Alt, and move it to wherever you want it. That's a quick trick, and that's good enough for me. I don't want my pages to be blue in color, so right click, format shape, again, no line, and I'm gonna fill them with light gray. You wanna give it a depth, click on your shadow presets, because this is a left page, maybe I want a right shadow. And there you have your first page. Now let's not create the next one. Let's go ahead and fill this up with different lines, however you want them. So insert, shape, line. Press and hold your shift so your line is nice and straight. And I think, yeah, that's good. Let me see if it's covering the edges. Yeah, yes, it is. I'm going to change the color of the line. I want it to this blue. I'm going to increase the width of it. I think I like the width. Uh, that's too big. Okay. I'm going to simply drag it down just a little bit. So I want it to start from there. And once that's done, remember you have to create multiple lines. So this is the trick here. You press Ctrl D and then move it to the position you want. So PowerPoint remembers this is where you want the next one to be. Once that's done, here is the magic. Ctrl D, Ctrl D, Ctrl D. Keep pressing it. There you have your first page. Now what I want you to do is go ahead and group all of this. So the easiest way to group is go to your selection pane and hide your rectangle in the back so you can only see your first page. Now control A and control G. And now it's one single group. When you move it, you're not moving the lines or anything. You're moving it completely with your page. And now bring back the rectangle. And once this is done, all you have to do is control and copy. Go ahead, rotate the page. I want to rotate this horizontally and making sure this is all lined up. Perfect, now I'm going to the view and taking off the grid lines. Right click and I'm gonna save this as a picture. 
I'm going to save it as left page. You'll see that you'll see why in a minute. I'm going to click on my right page and I will save it as a picture and say right page. Once all this is done, I'm going to click control A, right click and save this as a picture. I'm going to say whole page. Let's go ahead, create a new slide. I'm going to format the background. Click on picture, insert from the file and bring the whole page in. And now you see you have the entire page. Now, when I move things around, I will not be altering the lines. I will not be altering the pages. It's a best practice to save your page as a PNG file and then bring it into your next slide. Because if I do something here, as you can see, I'll be moving things back and forth, which is I don't want to deal with that. So I will create it and bring it back as a picture. Now, if you want to go ahead and adjust this, you can always do that using your offsets. So left offset, you want to make it smaller. There you go. You can do it. You can change it however you want. Now the next step is to create the binders and shape circle. Again, I will be giving you all these files so you don't have to invest your time in doing any of these, but it's always nice to know how this is done. I'm going to change the color to the same color as my background and absolutely no line once this is done. Control and copy. There I have it. And now I want to create those little binders. So shape, flowchart, terminator. There you go. I have it. Again, no line. I'm going to make it a gradient so I can give that 3D effect. I'm going to delete all of this so you can see how I started. Always pick the color of your background. There you go. That's my background. I'm going to add one more. So I want darker in the edges and lighter in between. Adding one more. My gradient is going to be radial and I'm going to make it middle. See how you like it. There's no set rule for this one. Get the hang of it, get the feel of it. Once I have this, simply control and copy. Now take these two, put them here, and you'll see exactly what you have. There you go. Now I have a binder. Now, once this is done, simply control C. Go back to the page where you set it up as a background and control we are at it and there you have it click control d and drag it and leave it where you want it and then simply control d control d control d it doesn't have to be perfect and then you created your notebook now let's go ahead and see how to customize each and every option you want to change the background click on the rectangle right click format shape and simply change the color of your rectangle whichever color you want but keep in mind when you're changing the color of your rectangle, you might want to go back to the slide and change the color of each and every one of these circles too, because you want to feel like they punched a hole in there. So you will click on the circle here and change it to purple again. Click on the circle and change it to purple. Control C and go ahead and paste it. Control V. And if you look at it, it looks like there is a whole bunch in there. So different options, different variations. Now, let's just say you want to change the color of the lines. You simply go to any of these slides, editable slides, and click on selection pane. Click on select selection pane and click on one of them. And you will see that group has been highlighted. I want to change the color of the lines, not the page. So I'm going to uncheck the rectangle. And as you can see, this just gives me the line. Now go back and pick the color you want. Outline, you want to have yellow color, orange colors. So I'm just going to say I have, let's say, green. I'm going to keep it to dark green. And once I select my color, I'm going to bring back the rectangle. So it's totally up to you how you want to do it. Now that we created your journal and the binders, let's go ahead and create those tabs. Shape, rounded corners, and there I have it. Now I'm going to customize one and then I'm going to copy everything. So right click, format shape, no line, solid fill. I'm going to click on the shadow effect. I'm going to click, let me click right shadow, 3D format, and I'm going to click something like that. And as you can see, it looks nice and cool. And I'm going to say step one. Because these are left buttons, make sure your text is aligned to left. Okay, once that's done, again, Click on it, control D, drag it to wherever you want. Let's say I want next step here and then another control D, another control D. There you have it. 
So once I finish all these sides, I'm simply going to copy these, control, and then drag them to this corner. That way I don't have to worry about the alignment. And then I'm going to make sure this is right aligned because I know I'm going to have one more page coming up here. So once this is done, you want to make sure you go ahead and change the colors of each tab. What I like to do is I like to use the colors from the website called colors.code slash palettes. Pick the one that you want, but you always might want to keep your students with vision disabilities in mind. Let's say I want to pick these colors. All I'm going to do is click on my PowerPoint. So insert screenshot and I want screen clipping. So I am going to simply drag this and it's been inserted in my PowerPoint. I'm going to keep it here and look what I'm going to do. Click on this color fill. I'm going to pick an eyedropper, pick the first color. There I have it. Color fill, pick the eyedropper, pick the second color. So I'm not spending too much time on my color palettes. I know exactly what palette I have, but if you want to, you can go ahead and customize it. And then go back and change your steps. This is step two, step three. Once you have your colors, simply go ahead and delete this. It's as simple as that. Once that's done, click on your text box and type whatever you want. So for demonstration purposes, I went ahead and created just three steps. But if you want more or less, you can go ahead and alter the steps. So this is how it looks on your notebook page. If you're happy with the way it looks, then that's perfectly fine. But if you want to add that 3D touch where your tabs are under your page, this is what you should be doing. You will go back to your main page. Remember, we have saved the left page and right page. Go ahead, click insert from this device. Click on your left page. Click insert, bring it back up here. Make sure it's aligned with the page in the back. So once this is aligned, you can see that my text and the binders are also behind it. Not to worry, you will simply click on home, select, selection pane. And as you can see, you want the left page to be over these rectangles, but under the text boxes. So simply go ahead and drag. And there you have it. Now the binders are on the top, your page is on the top, and it also looks like you have a couple of pages. All right, now everything looks perfect. Let's go ahead and take a look at the animations. Click on animation, click on your text box, click on wipe. It's wiping from the bottom. Click on effect options, wipe from the left. Once you're happy with your animation, click on your text box. Use your animation painter to copy it. Double click on it so you'll see that you have this paintbrush. Now go ahead, copy the animation to the second step, copy the animation to third step. Now what you want to do is you want to add triggers to these animations. That is, when I click on the step one, I want this animation. When I click on step two, I want this animation. When I click on step three, I want this animation. To do that, let's go to home, selection pane, and I want to name these as step one, step two. When I click on this, you see how this rectangle highlights? I'm going to delete all of this and say step one, just so that I know which one I'm using. That is step two, step two. I'm only going to do for three of them. So you have the idea of how to do that. Now let's go ahead and add triggers to animation. Animation, animation pane. When I click on the box, the box highlights. Click on this little arrow here. Click on timings. And as you can see, this triggers. Click on those triggers check start effect on click scroll down i want it to start when i click on step one there i have it click ok now click on the second one as you can see it's been highlighted click on the arrow timings trigger that's step two so pick your step two third one is right here click on this little arrow here timings click on your triggers and that is my step three and now when i look at the slideshow of this slide Step one, first animation comes in. Step two, second animation comes in. Step three, the third animation comes in. Perfect. It's all working. Now that you have created your journal along with your animations, let's go ahead and see how many different ways can we use it. So here is a math formula. So step one, step two, step three, step four. You might always want to put the action button so your students know where to go next. If you're an English educator, here is step one, step two, step three, how to write an essay. You're a history teacher. Here is 1970, 1990, 2000. Nobody wants to know what happened in 2020. But if you want to have a variation, like a composition notebook, here you have it. It's a composition notebook. Your page flips, how to write an essay. There you go. 
and page flips again step one step two step three step four step five step six if you don't like the composition notebook simply click on it right click format picture and as you can see i have picked a picture from here but you can go ahead and change the texture so please make sure if you change it for the front change it to the back as well and like i promised i will leave the entire file for you to download in the description box below so please feel free to download edit it change it customize it however you want i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you learned something new if you did please make sure you like subscribe and if you think it's worth sharing please go ahead and do so there could be an educator who might really want to use these features or at least download this template for their classes the next video is going to be on how to click and have this interactive powerpoint presentations and if you want to see more interactive powerpoints please make sure you comment in the comment section below because that's how i know what my co-educators need and that's how i plan with what videos i need to come up just for y'all try this out in your classes please let me know your feedback i would love to hear from y'all see how it went in your classes so please make sure you subscribe and stay tuned because i will be coming up with many many more activities just for you and always remember happy teaching and please take care of yourself